Hi you folks, in this GCSE Prescribed Practical, we want to try and determine if there's any relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. In order to do that, we are going to need to measure the angle of refraction for a range of angles of incidence. In order to do that, we need a ray box, we need a block made from glass or perspex, this block in particular is perspex, and we need a protractor to measure those angles. So the first thing we're going to do is take the block, put it in the centre of the page and trace around it with a pencil. This is important because throughout this experiment we are going to need to remove this block so that we can draw on the path of any of the light rays. Now we're going to remove the block and we're going to add in the normal. So first we choose a point along the long edge of the block and then to that point we will draw the normal which is 90 degrees to the boundary. This normal is important because this is what we use to measure all our angles from. Every angle is measured between the ray of light and the normal. So for the angle of incidence, it's between the incident ray and the normal. For the angle of refraction, it's between the refracted ray and the normal. So although that line isn't actually there, there's no ray of light at that point, it is important for us to take our measurements. The first angle of incidence that we're going to use here is 20 degrees. So using the protractor, we mark out where that um, ray of light is going to go. And I'll use the ruler just to map that out as well. Next, we replace the block and then we take our uh, ray box, turn it on and line up that incident ray of light with the incident ray that we've drawn on our diagram. It is important that you turn off the lights to make the ray of light more visible. So we can see the incident ray of light where it hits the block. We're interested in the refracted ray which is inside the block. So in order to figure out where that is, because we can't draw on the block, we mark out where the, the emergent ray is. Once we've worked out where the emergent ray is, we can remove the block, use the ruler then to join up those points and that will show us where the light emerged from the block. And by joining the two rays that we have in the middle, that will tell us where the ray of light went while it was inside the block. So we need to measure the angles of incidence and the angle of refraction. We already measured the angle of incidence because we set it at 20 degrees. So now we need to measure the angle of refraction, which remember is between the normal and the refracted ray. In this case, the angle of refraction works out to be 13.5 degrees. So next, we continue this for various rays of angles of incidence. We've already done 20, so now we're gonna do 30, 40, 50, and 60. And we repeat this process marking out where the emergent ray is and then joining the line in between to show where the path went inside the block and then that allows us to measure the angle of refraction that we need. So now that we've collected that data, we can have a look and see how we can determine what the relationship is between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. The next step will be to plot this information onto a graph. What we want to do is put the angle of incidence on the y-axis against the angle of refraction on the x-axis. Plotting the graph should look something like this. It isn't a straight line graph but it does demonstrate that there is some relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. However, it is not directly proportional because it is not a straight line graph through the origin. To summarize this experiment, there are four key areas that we need to look at. 
First of all, we have the diagram. Remember that in the exam, you need to clearly draw your diagram and label any pieces of apparatus and any key measurements that you need to take. So in this case, we have the ray box and um, we have a ray of light going towards our glass or perspex block. And you'll notice that I've also labeled on there the normal, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Make sure those angles are labeled between the ray and the normal. There are two key measurements that we take in this experiment, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Both of those require a protractor. In order to obtain those results, what we do is we draw around the glass block and we mark on the incident and the emergent rays. We then remove that block and join together the two rays. We construct the normal and measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. We repeat that process for a range of angles of incidence and angles of refraction. If we then plot a graph of the angle of incidence against the angle of refraction, what we find is that there is indeed a relationship between the two. However, they are not directly proportional because it is not a straight line graph through the origin. So that's the prescribed practical from start to finish. What I recommend you do now is pause the video here and make a copy of what you see on screen and add that to your revision notes. I hope you find that helpful.